name is Frank Bjork, and I'm honored to share with you all tonight. So before I begin, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. So um, before I begin, I just wanted to start out a little bit differently. Um, so I have, you know, I've, I've spoken in front of the kids all the time. I've been thrown on stage to, to just to speak or to do different types of things. I've been on the worship team before. Um, I've, I've been in all these kinds of situations that are normally uncomfortable, and I've still gone through with it. And it's, it's crazy how right now I am the most nervous I've ever been in my life. You can't tell at all. I've trained myself well. The key is to hide your insecurities and, and those things. But, um, you know, I, I, I felt like, you know, tonight, let's keep it real, right? How many of you, I know we usually wait till the end, but how many of you are a believer? You believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay, good. So for those of you who are guests, it's, um, we welcome you as well, you know. Um, but I, I, I know in church, sometimes it feels like you have to put up a facade that you have it all together, especially as Christians, you know, especially, you know, for, for you leaders in, in the church tonight, you know, you have to put up this, this presentation, which is real, that, that you're believing the best and that you're trying the best, but inside sometimes it's a mess, right? And so tonight, I just wanted to keep it real. And I, I believe the thing that's making me so nervous is that this message is for me as much as it is for you, you know, and it's just, it's calling me and it's calling us tonight to do something um, bigger and something real. So I just want to speak with my heart and I'll say, let's be real. You get unfiltered Frank today. I don't even know what that looks like. I'm never unfiltered. Um, so anyways, tonight, um, oh, actually, can you put up? Yeah. So tonight we're talking about system check. Now, before I explain that, I wanted to, to connect with you guys and say, you know, all of us want to get to a destination, right? Like how many of you have dreams, you have aspirations, you have goals, you can foresee a place that you want to be, right? Say amen if, if you have, if you have, okay. So we all want to get to destination. The problem with destinations is that problems get in our way to getting to that destination. And so I'm going to talk about a tool that I discovered that God has given us to help us get to that destination. And we already know what that tool is. It's the Holy Spirit. But to connect it to an illustration of a car, we're going to see it as the Holy Spirit is our, is our check system, our system check. How many of you have a car? Okay, good. I'm talking to the right audience tonight. So in your car, what's the thing that tells you the condition of your car? Yes, the check engine light. It's the dashboard, okay? So that dashboard is key for us to understanding things. Um, so just let's 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 have a little bit of fun, right? So tonight, I don't know if you knew, it's National Cheeseburger Day, and so let's see, right? How many of you had cheeseburgers already today? I didn't have. See, man, none of us are celebrating. This is a shame. Okay, don't worry. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you to a better destination. So, who can tell me at least like five icons on the dashboard where the light will turn on? If you can do it, I'm gonna give you five dollars so you can get yourself a cheeseburger. Okay. Johnny, all the way in the back, you have, to, you have to scream it so we can all hear you. At least five. Check engine light. Oil light. Temperature. RPMs. And battery. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to run over here. So Johnny, TJ, I'll have you give it to him. Johnny gets a cheeseburger. The rest of you guys lost. That's it. I'm sorry. You're going to have to buy it on your own. So, yes, the... The dashboard tells us about all these icons. Um, some other things are the, the traction, the automatic or the anti-lock brake system, tire pressure, your headlights, um, your fuel. The Probably the worst one that we all hate is that engine light, right? When that thing turns on, you already see dollar signs. You're like, Lord, please, I'm just going to keep driving until it breaks down. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Or, or if, if you're that, that person where you're just driving, right, and... Um, all of a sudden, you look at your gas gauge, and the light was on. You're like, oh, my God, how long has it been like that? And you just pull over on the, the, fast, the nearest exit. Oh, okay, so just like a car check system, right? I keep on feeling I'm saying it wrong. System check, we also have a personal check system. And so what I call it is the conviction system. And so it checks things like your heart, you know, your, your attitude, your actions, how many of you have ever woken up 
you know, early in the morning or late at night and you have to use the restroom and you're half awake and you just stub your toe on the door and you just, it takes all of your energy just to not to swear out loud, right? And it's like, warning, warning, warning. <laughs> so the, the way I define conviction is to impress with a sense of guilt. Now, before you go hating on the Holy Spirit for impressing the sense of guilt, I want to remind you that it's a warning. It's not a judgment. And that's how he's our helper, where he warns us before things get too bad. And so that's where we're going to kind of begin and start. One person in the Bible that I absolutely love is Joseph. How many of you guys have ever heard of Joseph in Genesis? Okay, so I, I, I don't think there's anybody in the Bible like Joseph that has such a huge sense of integrity. I mean, this guy out of, I mean, maybe with the exception of Job, you know, who just had his life rocked. Um, this guy had every excuse to just, you know, call it quits and say, whatever, I don't even care anymore. I'm just going to do what I want. Um, but I'll, I'll give you an example of, you know, someone. So back in those times in, in Egypt, you know, there was no king, there was no president, but there was Pharaoh. And so the way that Pharaoh spoke highly about Joseph was, was like this. And this is in, I don't know if I gave you guys this first. What's my, my first, first scripture? Uh, yes, okay, so Genesis 41, 38 through 40. And it reads, so Pharaoh asked them, making sure, no, I guess I'll read from this one. Okay, so Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man, so obviously filled with the Spirit of God? And so before you go to the next one, just hold it right there. So first and foremost, someone that's the highest ruler of that area of that land recognizes that he is filled with the spirit of god and so for someone to acknowledge that means that it's legit he is filled so let's go to the next verse then pharaoh said to joseph since god has revealed this meaning of the dreams to you clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are and so he speaks highly about his intelligence his wisdom and if we continue on to verse 40, you will be in charge of my court. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm, let's say, let's say we're all CEO of a company, right? Of a million dollar company. So Joseph does not know Pharaoh. Pharaoh does not know Joseph. Would you let an employee that has integrity you know, and that is, is just wise and, and smart and intelligent. Would you give them full control over your company? No. And yet, Pharaoh says, you will be in charge of my court, and all my people will take orders from you. Everybody say, hey. <laughs> Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. And so this guy is incredible. If you've never read his story, Read it tonight, Genesis, it starts in chapter 37. So with that said, we kind of set the foundation here. We're going on a destination. I want to talk a little bit about problems, right? How many of you ever had a problem in life? Okay, amen. Yes, I love it. I love it. So one of the things about cars that I find fascinating is that they're, they're just not fair. They're really not fair. People recommend that you... Um, how do you call it? You give your car routine maintenance. You know, you change the oil every 3,000 miles. Um, you change your brakes. I think I don't even know what the rule is. I don't do that. I'm bad. But you, I guess you change the brakes when they start to squeak. Is that the rule? Right? <laughs> Before, when they're grinding, it's already too late. You know, you're bad. Um, and then, you know, obviously put gas in your car. Um, but there's routine maintenance things that you can do. Change your tires. You know, it's when you put, it's, um, if you put a penny on the tread of your tires, if you can see Abraham Lincoln's forehead, I think it's like too low or something like that. There's all these kind of rules. I learned this in, uh, in high school. But anyways, right, so let's say we do all that, you know, and then we give our car a nice wash. We fill it up with gas. Cars don't play by the rules. The next day, you can blow out a tire. It could be a nail, it could be a pothole, it could just, you know, your car could just not like you. You know, the let's say you get, you, get your, you get your engine fixed and then your transmission goes out. Or 
you could even you see you go to the you go to the repair shop right and you get xyz fixed and it's all looking good as soon as you get back home the same problem came up again right cars just don't play by the rules i don't like cars but i love cars and we need them and so two weeks ago it's actually two weeks today it was on wednesday um i had one of the worst car experiences of my life it wasn't too big or too expensive but um okay so this is how it worked out so after wednesday service um, I, you know, I texted my wife, said, hey, I'm coming home, and she's like, great, um, I want you home. She's, she's studying, and then um, while she's at home, she's watching the kids, and so she wanted to tag team me in. And so I was like, okay, how many, how many um, married people do we have? Okay, husbands, you know that when your wife say you need to get home, right? How many of you know, like, she's not messing around, right? She's waiting. <laughs> so it was, it was one of those moments where she's like, you need to get home. And it's like, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. You try to, to, to get them to understand the situation and that you're doing God's work and, you know, talking to people. You need to get home. I was like, okay, I'm going home. And so along the way, um, I noticed that my temperature gauge was heading to the red. And I was like, oh, no, what's the matter? And so while I'm driving home, I call my wife and say, hey, um, my car temperature gauge is, uh, is heating up. I'm going to pull over, and I'm just going to check. And so pull over, pop open the hood, and there's a tear in my um, – it's the radiator hose. That's where – this is what cools your car, basically. And so I call my wife, and I say, um, hey, I, I need to get a hose. And she's like, you need to get home. <laughs> and I'm like, come on. This is an emergency. I need to get my car fixed. You need to get home. And so – I'm like, okay, fine. And then, the, and then my, um, what is my, my Holy Spirit is like, whoop, whoop, warning, warning, watch out for your attitude. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I go home, and it's so funny. Problems, problems are never the problems, right? There's always something deeper that's the problem. And so what happens is, you know, I get home, and then it's just, I, I love it. See, we're being real, right? So I, I, I slightly lose my temper, just a little bit. And, and I, tell her, I tell her, I have to go get the hose. And so while she's telling me, no, I'm already looking, like, which repair store is open or, you know, where can I go to? And it happens that O'Reilly was open. They closed at 10. It was 945. And I'm all the way in Canyon Country. They're all the way in Newhall where I was. And so I'm thinking, you know what? I told um, I told my wife, I said, I, I need to get this. I'm going to go. You know, I'm just going to take faith that my wife will still love me. And she does. But uh, so I just told her, I said, uh, I said, can I, you know, can I take the van? Because I don't want my car to overheat. And she's like, she's like, you want to take my car now? Uh, and then, you know, it's just a warning, warning, watch out, watch out. And so I was like, you know what, fine. Pride sets in, right? I ignore the warning. A little bit pride sets in. It's like, I'm just going to do this. So I take my car. I drive all the way to, to O'Reilly because I figure I can, hand, I can pull over. But I just, I floor it all the way over there. I make it. Didn't get to the red. And then I got the hose. And um, by that time, you know, it wasn't too bad. So I told, I told my wife, I said, um, I can, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. Everything was fine. Like she cared. No, she, <laughs> she did. So everything was fine. I got it in time. I bought the hose and then I bought the radiator fluid. And um, so then I drive away home. I drive home and then about, uh, no, actually, I, yeah, I made it all the way home and everything was good. So by that time I could rest, I could take over, you know, the kids. I could make sure that my wife was good. Everything was wonderful. And then it was probably around, let's say, 11 o'clock. And I, I go back, uh, I go back to my wife and I say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix, fix my car. So I fix the hose and everything. And then, um, you know, you, ha you have to test it to make sure. So mind you, I'm thinking, you know, tomorrow I have to take my kids to school. I have to go to work. You know, there's so many things to do. I don't want to share the van with my wife because she has to go to school and work and all this stuff. And so I go um, for the test. And let me see. Hold on one second. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay. And so. I, I drive it all the way on, on the 14. You guys know where Target is? So it's like right by there. And um, I drive it. And as soon as I get like right before you get up to that hill, it's in the red. And I'm like, oh, man, you got to be kidding me. And so I, I pull over and I look. I was like, what's the problem? So I mentioned the problem is never the problem, right? There's always something deeper. And just little old prideful me forgot to check the oil as well and it so happens that the oil was completely empty and when your oil is empty your car overheats as well 
And so now I'm in a situation where my car is in the freeway. My wife's not going to help me. She's not going to help at all, you know. And there's no gas station within like a mile. And so I'm thinking I can either just, I can call AAA, which I don't want to do, or I can just get this oil. And so I decided to get the oil. But here's the thing. I always think, what's the quickest way to the destination, right? I could walk all the way to the 14, get off on the exit on, I believe it's Golden Valley, and then walk back up to go to the Shell gas station, or I can run across the freeway. And so, knowing me, I ran across the freeway. I had to wait. You know, but, okay, so here's the thing, right? I'm thinking, it's late. By now, it's probably like 12 o'clock, and I, I'm thinking, okay, this already looks suspicious. This is how people get shot. I'm a black guy. And so this isn't, this isn't, I didn't look like how I look right now. This is, Frank is off the clock. He's got a white t-shirt on. He's got some shorts. I don't care how I look. I just want my car to work. And so I'm thinking, okay, I run across the freeway. And then the next thing is, okay, I can, I can run up the freeway some more, or I can climb up the mountain that goes to where Target is. And if you know, that mountain is like 3,000 feet. And so I was thinking, okay, the best way to go up the mountain is to run up the drain. You know how they have that little drain? And so there's like, there's like four levels of that mountain. And I'm running like, whoo, whoo, whoo. and you know when you have that false humility, you're like, thank you, God. You get to have me exercise. It all works out in my favor. And it's, I'm like running, running, running. And it's at level three where my legs start to burn. And I'm asking myself, why am I still running? And so I stop. Long story short, I go to the shell. And so I'm trying to compose myself. I'm all sweaty. The you know, cashier's probably wondering, who the heck am I? Um, get the oil. And then I have to run all the way back, run across the freeway again, go to my car. I fill it up with oil. And I'm like, okay, it's good. This should work now. I don't know what else to do. And so I, um, I start my car. It's, um, it's cool, you know. And so I drive up. Um, the hill, it stays within the mid-range. I'm like, all right, this is good. And then I start to come down the hill, and then it goes back in the red. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. At that point, I just want my car to burn already. I don't even care. So I drive home, and, you know, I, I had to pull over, I think, a couple times. By now, it's 1 o'clock. My wife probably doesn't know where I am. She's sleeping. And, um, you know, I just get home, and I just sit there in my failures. It's just, and at that point, have you ever gotten to that point in your life where you just don't even care? You just like, I hate it. And so, that was me. I was, I was at my house trying to be a civil Christian with my family, trying to fix my car and save money. And um, you know, I mentioned the 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 problem is not the problem, but also I wanted to tell you guys. Um, so Ecclesiastes seven nine, they can put it up while I while I do this. Okay, so it says, control your temper, for anger labels you as a fool. <clears throat> and so I didn't tell the ushers about this, but I think I'm going to need help afterwards. I'm going to do it anyways. So if you're not careful, <clears throat> you can let your problem become another problem, where you just had enough with everybody, and you don't want to see anybody. And this is your safe little bubble. I don't want to talk to my wife. I don't want to talk to my kids. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to be a Christian. I just want my car fixed, right? And the problem changes from being an actual problem to being you not wanting to face your problem. And so I think a lot of us can get stuck here too. So next, I'm just going to stay like this for a little while. So everybody say this, the master has the solution. The answer to our problems is always Jesus. And I'm going to explain why. It's very simple. So this is a tip. Let me get out of this thing. This is, what, uh, this is what we use in kids' ministry. The kids love it. So when you focus on the problem, all of your attention is on the problem. You know, let's say this is, this is the problem that you have. It's like, okay, I need a solution for this problem. I need to figure out how to solve this problem. I need an idea for this problem. I need an exterminator for this problem. You're focused on the problem. But when you focus on the destination, the problems work themselves out as you go to the master. And so, as I mentioned, I had a little issue with pride. And if you, so this is the kicker. 
right? Going back to my car. The problem was, mind you, so I went to, to O'Reilly. I got the, the hose. And it's the first time I did the hose. The, my, my mechanic told me I did a good job. You know, this little pat on my back. Um, so I got the hose and I got the radiator fluid. What I missed was when I opened up the radiator, it appeared like it was full, but the problem was it was empty. So if I would have just put radiator fluid in my car, all my problems would have been solved. That's all it was. And so the master already knows what the problem is. And sometimes we confuse the situation with the problem, right? The problem wasn't that my car wasn't working. That was the situation. My problem was I didn't know how to fix my car. And so if I would have gotten over myself, called my brother-in-law, who was a mechanic, who probably would have answered the phone and said, hey, this is what happened with my car. How do I fix it? He probably would have walked me by step by step, and I would have been home at most likely 11 o'clock instead of 1 a.m., drowning in my sorrows. And so it's the same thing with us. I think some of us get stuck where we are because we refuse to call the master. We refuse to call God. And, and we let our problems or situations get in the way. Think about it. You know, some of us in this room, I'm not looking at anybody, but some of us in this room, a um, simple example is you're afraid to get involved here at church. Let's say, you know, somebody asks you to pray over a group and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't know how to pray. You just talk to God. I don't know how to pray. Or some of us, you know, were asked, hey, why don't you be a part of this event? And you're like, sorry, I, I don't have the time. I can't do it. I have a busy life, a busy family. Um, imagine if, so we're bringing along that parallel with the car, right? Imagine if you call your boss, right? And you say, oh, Frank, I can't come in today. And I'm like, why? why? What happened? It's like, oh, this is so embarrassing, Frank. Um, my car's dirty. It's too embarrassing. I can't pull up because it's, it's just dirty. You know, be like, what? Or you call them, right? Because some of us, we have issues. They're just small little tweaks, right? And, and we call Frank. And we're like, oh, Frank, I can't come in today. He's like, why? What happened? Oh, you see, my, the door handle on my car, it broke off. I just, I, I, I can't. I need to fix it first before I come into work, right? Or, or for all you, for the, for the time people, right? Let's say you, you wake up late. 30 minutes late, and you say, oh, Frank, I can't come in today. I was like, why? What happened? I overslept 30 minutes. My whole day is off. I got to rechange everything around. I'm sorry. I got I to gotta, I gotta take a call in, right? It's ridiculous, but yet that's what we do with God. So the master always has the solution. Okay, so this is, this is, a, this is what I want to stick with all of us tonight. How am I doing in time? Okay, I'm doing good. So everybody say, journey to your destination. Very good, very good. So God gave Joseph a sense of power and a glimpse of his destination. I didn't give this verse to media, so I'm just going to read it from my Bible. This is Genesis 37, verse uh, 5 through 9. Um, if you have your Bible, go ahead and, and read along, but if, if not, I'll read it to you. So verse 5, it said, Then Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Please listen to this dream I have had. For behold, we were binding sheaves in a field, and lo, my sheaf rose up and also stood erect and above your sheaves, gathering around and bowed down to my sheaf. Then his brother said to him, Are you actually going to reign over us, or are you really going to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams, and for his words. And I guarantee you, if not all of you, most of you in this room, God has given a destination. God has given a dream to you. And some of us let haters stop us from getting to that destination. Or some of us are too afraid to journey to that destination. So I want to encourage you tonight that that's got to stop. What I love about Joseph is he really understood the depth of problems. Um, I, w I really wanted to read his full story. It's just too long. Maybe if we were, if it was an Ignite or if we had a five-hour service, I could read it to you. But just to summarize his life, so you have this, he started off a 17-year-old kid. He was, I mean, this was probably the first mistake, but he was favored by his father, and his brothers hated him for that. 
it got to the point where his brothers sold him into slavery um, to Egypt. And so from getting stripped from his family, sold to slavery, he was able to be in a position, because God favored him, to be the servant of one of Pharaoh's officials. And so the, the official trusted him so much that he didn't even worry about what he did. He said, you can oversee everything, you know, in this house. I won't even check. And so during that process, the official's wife had the hots for him and tried to pursue him. She ended up lying, making up the story. And so then the official sent him to prison. So you're going from ripped from your family, sold, and then you had it going good, and then you went to prison. And so then within prison, um, the guard found favor over him, or the God gave him favor, and so he saw that his position. So the guard put him as head over all the prisoners. And so it was working out again for him. He ended up um, interpreting a dream for two guys, and then the guys promised, or one of the guys, the other guy died. But uh, we got killed. <laughs> it was a long story. Um, but uh, so they, um, he, the, um, Joseph told the guy, he's like, hey, don't forget about me when you go to Pharaoh. Just remember me. And he forgot about him for two years. So, I mean, if, if that was my life for 17 years, I would have probably quit at I'm sold, you know, as a slave. And, and, and this guy, he managed to, to listen to his system check. He says, warning, warning, watch it. Watch it. Watch it. And so, let me jump to, okay. And so, okay, so this is, this is, this is a key. If, if anybody's taking notes, make sure you write this down. When you're in a situation with problem, the only thing you can do is take personal responsibility. Like I said, cars ain't fair and life ain't fair. The only thing you can do is take personal responsibility to find it deep within yourself and to figure out, okay, what can I learn from this? Um, how did I allow this to happen? Because when you take personal responsibility for your life and what happens, you gain strength. When you allow excuses to be your reason why you are the way you are, not only are you convincing yourself of lies, but you are giving up so much power that God is giving you to change your atmosphere. And that is the story of Joseph, where he refused to accept excuses. He looked at a situation, he took responsibility and said, okay, I'm going to do what I can do. And I'm going to leave the rest up to you, God. So, for us, I know it's hard. Like I mentioned, I know that God has planted things inside you, and God has given you a destination. The one thing that I think we miss often is that we see our destination as a location or a level, right? Uh, Joseph didn't arrive when he got to Pharaoh. When he was made second under Pharaoh, he didn't arrive. Um, he still had to deal with his family that was coming in the next chapter, his family issues. That'll jack you up all over again if you, if you don't watch it. Um, and so a lot of us think you know, I need to get that promotion, or I need to get into that relationship. I need to save up X amount of money. I need to get this education, and that will set me up to the next level, um, and that's where God is leading me, and I think that's really where we miss it because Joseph's destination was not Egypt. It was Pharaoh. That was his destination, and you think this 17-year-old boy was allowed to go through this horrific life only to influence the most influential man in that area. Not only did he influence him and get rewarded for that, he saved all of their lives from a famine. And so when you think about your destination as a person, it changes everything. There's plenty of times where, where I want to give up. You know, as a father, it's hard. Um, our wives are just amazing. They could probably outrun us day and night, um, and we try and get our acts together. But as a father, as a husband, you know, as a Christian, every day we have to convince ourselves, you know, don't give up. Keep going. Keep moving. Keep moving forward. And I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to paint this picture. If you guys can imagine that your life and your destination could really be you being a vehicle and picking up hitchhikers who are lost or who are looking for someone to help them in that situation. 
And all we do is we go back from point A, where we have Jesus, point B, to pick up someone, to bring them back to point A, to Jesus, to point B, and on and on and on. And through that journey, you'll discover everything that God has planned for you. And I'm sure there's people in this room that would be given the opportunity to influence the president. You know, there's people that would be given the opportunity to change the school system. My goodness, to speak into someone's life that wants to, God forbid, shoot out their school, you know? But what keeps us from that is those problems, masked as excuses. And this is, this is kind of a, it's a, it's a light slap to the face with a big hug around it. But so, so here's the thing. If, if we're too afraid to step into our destination and to fulfill the plan that God has called for us, I think we should take a moment and go back to the beginning and realize our first destination was salvation. And if you're willing to give up the plan, you might as well give up salvation. But you're not going to do that. And so I think it's time for us, you know, who, who God is speaking to, it's time to have a little appreciation and a little respect for what God has done in our lives. You know, and to trust that although there's going to be problems, the master is always going to give us a solution. And we're going to come out with an amazing story and we're going to bring so many people back to Jesus and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to challenge you guys to revamp your check system I was I was really encouraged this week by two people um, you know when when taking my kids to school so just backtrack really quick let me see where I am make sure I don't go over time so to, to backtrack um, and I take my kids to school and there's times, so if you have kids, you know they're crazy. And it's just, you have to try so hard to keep your cool all the time. And for me, everywhere I go, there's somebody from Elevate Church that sees me. And so I'm constantly, be on your best behavior, be on your best behavior. Because um, you never know who's watching. Um, but there's there's times where, you know, I'll, we're keeping it real. I just want to smack my kids around. and But I don't. And even more, more intentionally, these past uh, three weeks, I've, I've taken this, uh, this opportunity just to, to be super intentional with my kids and to figure out who they are and how I can help them. Um, and so, if you've ever, if you've ever tried to invite someone to Jesus, you know that there's no like icebreaker to that. You know, you can't go to the supermarket, hey Jesus, and just be like, whoa. You know, there's no smooth way to talk about Jesus. Um, but what was so amazing about this was I never wanted to be that guy at my son's preschool that's like, you know, Jesus loves you. Like, that, that just annoying Christian. I just, I wanted to be authentic and genuine and just invite them out of a place of, of just realness. But what was so awesome was um, there's this guy that I was talking with, a dad. Um, and uh, he, I, I told him, he asked me like a while ago where I work. I said, I work at church. Um, but fast forward to now, it was I think like this past week or two weeks ago. Um, he, he told me, he's like, hey, you know, I just want to say, I really like how you talk to your kids. You know, there's a lot of guys, there's a lot of parents you know, that just smack them around. Um, and he says, even me, you know, I just want to pull their ears, but, but you take time to really, to really talk to them. And then, and then the, it was the crazy thing. He's like, he said, you go to church, which church do you go to? And I was like, Elevate Church, you know, we would love to have you. Um, and so God set it up that I can invite him. And who knows what kind of Pharaoh he is what kind of influence he is, but it came from a place of trying. That was my destination with my kids. It's like, don't kill them, please, don't, don't kill them. Um, and it was hard, but I did it. And, and, and just to, to say it again, I know there's so much in us. There's so much in us that God wants to do, but you can't be half in, half out. Just as much as you wanted salvation, you have to want the destination that God has for you, um, or else you're just, you're fooling yourself. Amen. All right. Well, what I'm going to do, I know this was a message really for, you know, it, 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 was, it, was, it was that light slap and hug um, for us believers. But also, you know, if it's your first time today or if you've never began a relationship with Jesus, I wanted to invite you, you know, with the story about Joseph, if you've ever been in that position where you don't know how to X, Y, Z, or you feel like going in that tube, 
or you feel like giving up, I'm here to tell you that God is the only strength that you can have that will see you through anything. It's a promise. It's guaranteed. Like we sang in worship, he will not let you down. I promise you. I'm up here on the stage. I didn't want to be up here tonight. I wanted to run away, but I didn't because I know God wants to speak to us tonight. And so um, why don't we do this? Everybody close your eyes and bow your heads. And we're just going to allow God a chance um, just, to, just to move. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to move and to touch our hearts, whether you're the person that needs to change or whether you're the person here that you've never said yes to Jesus. This is the opportunity that I'm going to give you. I'm, I'm so excited to take you from point A to point B to meet Jesus and for you to take more, but it starts with your decision. And so if you want to give Jesus a chance just to rock your life, I'm going to ask you just to, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. And nobody's looking around. Nobody's judging you. Um, there's no warning signs going off about anything. Um, if anything, we want you just to experience God's love. But I'm going to ask on the count of three, if you want to give Jesus a try and accept him as your Lord and Savior, just raise your hand. Here we go. One, two, three. Awesome. I see those hands. Praise God. I see them. God is so happy. Okay, let's do this. Pray, um, everybody pray along with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you love us, that you have a plan for us, and that you'll never fail us. God, we ask for your forgiveness for every shortcoming we've had. But today, we guarantee you and we'll follow you for the rest of our life. We'll trust you for the rest of our life. And we'll obey you for the rest of our life. So help us to love you. I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. Praise God.